Hey, Matt. Hey, how are you? Doing well, how are you? Good, today might be a really quiet day, we'll see. Um, there was no TOC meeting today and we're coming off the July 4th holiday. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's like you, me, and one other person. I haven't heard from LLE either, but that was your uh, fourth. It was good. We actually, our fireworks got canceled, uh, unfortunately, for unforeseen reasons, so. Oh, really? Like rain or something? Uh, no, 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 no rain. I don't actually know what it was. We actually went to like an amusement park near us uh, and they were supposed to have fireworks on site. And then like an hour before they're like, due to technical reasons, we have to cancel them. I'm like, well, that kind of stinks because that's why we came. <laughs> How about you? Um, uh, so my, my girlfriend and her three kids are in Colorado uh, for almost two weeks. So they come back on uh, Friday or third Friday. Uh, and uh, they're they're like having a vacation with family. Nice. And, um, and my oldest, uh, he's seventeen and will be a high school senior next year. Um, he is uh, he was accepted to Rhode Island School of Design, a uh, RISD's pre college yeah. program. Oh so wow! I yeah, That's awesome. Him to go on Saturday, I think, and uh, I pick him up uh, the first week of August. It's like nice. so, uh, it's like me and the dog. So yeah. it's. It's very quiet. Quiet weekend. But RISD, that, that's really exciting. Congrats to him. That, that's great. Yeah, I'm pretty psyched about it. I'm actually plowing back through the notes from like a year and a half ago, maybe, mm -hmm. because I had identified way back then some SIG role or some tag roles that we really need to fill. Um, you know, both tech leads, as I talked to you about a chair, uh, but there's a bunch of other stuff that, you know, tags are free to make their own roles. Um, so for example, we need someone to work on um, social media and communications, like in an intentional way, it's an actual job, it takes time. Um, you know, we, we need artists and or uh, design folks to work on a tag website and or other, you know, collateral and artifacts and things like that. So um, I remember I captured a lot of this uh, a long time ago. And so I'm being a little bit lazy here and hoping to copy paste because none of it's changed. Um, but how, uh, Got a couple others too. Okay. Yeah, well, we are now two minutes over. So I'll give people another minute or two to filter in. Um, but like I said, given the holiday and the proximity, I wouldn't be surprised um, if we have a really short meeting <laughs> um, today. Uh, let's see what else has been new. Um, but I should say for the recording, uh, this is uh, the first Tuesday uh, week uh, of the TAG observability. Um, the CNCF sponsored uh, group and channel and stream. So please don't do anything that would be a violation of the code of conduct. Um, that said, um, I think we might have a couple new faces here as well. So in a moment, I will forward the notes. People can sign in. Have you been following the profiling stuff, I would imagine? Oh, yes. Yes. No, a lot of a lot of interest early on, which is exciting, and a lot of uh, non uh, hotel folks, which is even more exciting. So, yes. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty psyched about that as well. So I'll put it in the chat here. There's a link to the meeting notes. Feel free to sign in.
Oh, oh, oh Elena just showed up. Hey, or appeared rather, not show up. <laughs> Hi, folks. Hi, Steve. How are Hi, you? Elena. <laughs> Hi, Matt. How are you? Um, I was telling Steve that as we're, you know, one day after July 4th uh, and no TOC meeting today, uh, which always happens just the hour prior to this meeting. Yeah. Uh, we might have very light attendance. Yes. Uh, I think most folks in the U.S. at least are out uh, still on break. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think Kevin from, I think Google is here. Uh, yeah. yeah. Hi, Hi Kevin. Does it already work? How are you? Hey, um, does it work? I, yes, we does, can hear you. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Zoom doesn't tell me if I'm talking or not. Um, yeah, hey, I got a, I got the message. I was like, yeah, okay, I want to stop anyway. So here I am. Cool. Um, so, what's your team do? Uh, you kind of gave a teaser in the channel. Um, yeah. So, um, my team specifically is uh, GKE metrics. So. Um, we take, we collect metrics in our Kubernetes clusters, um, mostly system metrics in like Prometheus format and uh, from like the Kubelet container metrics and then send them to Google Cloud Monitoring for customers to see. And right now we, yeah, we do that using uh, Open Telemetry um, and we're slowly moving away from Open Telemetry um, to do more optimizations on memory efficiency because we noticed that parsing the Prometheus format is expensive and we're like doing a few experiments on how to handle metrics more efficiently. No, oh, that's cool. That's very interesting. I mean, uh, uh, you said that you're moving away from hotel or, or yeah, I see. Um, is that the mainly the... because yeah, um, right now in on every GK node, there is a container called GK metrics agent and it's an mm -hmm slightly customized uh, open telemetry collector mm -hmm. that finds all pods in the, on the node that um, export Prometheus metrics, like all system pods, yeah. and scrapes every one of them using open telemetry and Prometheus uh, receiver and then sends those metrics. And the problem is it's like this one single thing and it uh, scrapes a lot of metrics and with the amount of metrics and the script intervals we're getting to a point where it consistently out of goes out of memory at, at some point it, it doesn't grow well enough and we've had other issues where like open telemetry um uh is seems to be still changing a lot so like we updated open telemetry and suddenly most of them, our metrics were gone and we didn't have a proper way to conformance test all of that so it was it specifically the collector uh really? specifically well yeah the collector yeah and was it um, specifically the prometheus receiver or um uh, no the reason metrics were gone where changes in um open telemetry like the collector specific like um i think the exporter and like uh, we use batching to send 200 metrics at once and that doesn't always work correctly so we, we ran into a few problems and mostly that like the collector is a great great for specific use cases but in our case we're collecting so many metrics in one process that it's no longer it's not usable. scalable and wanna, yeah. yeah and we want to split it up into uh, a mix of sidecars and um other options and, and right now we're working on the sidecar to um scrape prometheus metrics convert them into cloud monitoring format and send them away and that's where we came across open metrics because um, Google Cloud Monitoring relies on start time to be there for cumulative metrics. And right now, uh, the open telemetry, well, not in the current version, I think, but in the version we use, open telemetry relies on the process start time metric. And that's somewhere at the bottom of the metrics response. So we always have to buffer yeah. way more metrics than we want to mm -hmm. until we get that. So we're kind of excited to. See if open metric. Uh, oh, very good. I mean, again, I think that would be super interesting because you know when, um, I mean, when I worked on the Prometheus interop, you know, for the OTL collector and OTLP mm -hmm. specifically, and and you know, um, one of the uh, issues, as you said, 
is you know handling scaling up the collector to uh, to be able to handle you know sharded uh, uh, sharding mm -hmm. as well as um, you know just, uh, not sidecar uh, sidecars are used typically but you know really stateful set support so that was something that we built out but um, we did actually make sure that it was open metrics compliant so from an you know format and a compatibility standpoint that certainly exists but you're you are it's i think in the scaling that we did i, di I did see that you know there was uh, scaling of metrics especially when you have like a stream of metrics coming in for uh in a really large number there's still work to be done there for the collector so yeah. and and the biggest well a the prometheus library itself has some yeah exactly inefficiencies yep. um like it's also not fully we, compatible with op open metrics believe it or not yeah that, <laughs> that like i'm also joining prometheus maintainer sessions now because we want to like could maybe help could. on there and to implement um but like what we noticed is for example relabeling is very expensive like we just yeah we, we recently forked the prometheus library because like we know what metrics we want. So um, we can already, if we see the metric name, we can already stop parsing and relabeling if we don't care about the rest. Um, that's just like optimization. And um, like in our case, we collect metrics from many containers. And when we notice that, that if a single container has like a cardinality explosion or sends too many metrics, that's enough to lose metrics for everybody else and so that's why we're kind of splitting things up a little reduced blast radius and have you have you uh, proposed some of these changes back to the um, collector sync at in hotel um we have a regular sync with um uh david Ashpole. yeah um yes. uh but to my well we're proposing some of the changes but in general i think um well, I'm not sure if what we're doing is actually the target use case for the collector. So we're that's why we're kind of branching off in this other direction. Also, because the Prometheus metrics we scrape, like um, we don't need most of the logic Prometheus does. We only need their parsing for the text format and hopefully proto soon. We'll see with open metrics and so on um so that was what uh, i mean it, yeah. you looked at the operator in hotel for the hotel collector because yeah, that's where yeah. that uh, scaling had have, was done and um you know one of the areas as you rightly said is that there's a lot of stuff you do not need from the prometheus um you know yeah. uh, uh, dependency, if you will, and and yeah. uh, uh, optimizing and making a lower, you know, smaller footprint um, there would actually be ideal because it's actually quite it's carrying a lot of baggage uh, in that and whole process. To my understanding, right now, the like that's why we like we have a fork of hotel uh, hotel collector contrib and Prometheus because. We had to make optimizations in the Prometheus library and then in the right. receiver library and and, and it's a, a whole chain and the optimizations we did were kind of like hotel right now takes the Prometheus library so you pass it a Prometheus config mm -hmm. and any optimization we're doing the Prometheus side you can't really because it's like nested in three libraries yep so if hotel would yeah, the hotel needs to support pr proper Prometheus. That's why it probably won't won't work for us. I think I um, think there was another uh, issue, and and this was something that has been ongoing, is where uh, to ensure from a compatibility uh, configuration compatibility standpoint, yeah. full compatibility between the two formats of configuration, right? So. Yeah. Uh, there is a proposal for a, you know, standardized or a, or a more sophisticated configuration manager, which is actually handled with the remote, um, there's a remote agent uh, work group in, um, in the hotel sinks. And that's where, you know, this agent management, especially for configuration management specifically, 
is um, you know being discussed, right? Uh, yeah. That said, again, there were there is a, there are actually a few design proposals that were made in terms of improving the configuration management for hotel and making it more sophisticated and fully compatible with you know uh, users not having to change a Prometheus existing Prometheus config configuration, for example, and the format and it being interoperable with the hotel configuration um, ingestion. Yeah. So uh, again, I think David's also aware of it, but uh, yeah, happy to I think it's because um, and, and Steve, it might be worth, you know, our while kind of having a, a, a more detailed discussion, because I think that that work got a bit uh, less prioritized by the maintainers. Um, so we should definitely, you know, figure out how we can get some of these requirements aligned. Um, because these, these are known, known issues. They're not new. And uh, Kevin, we'd love to, yeah. you know, make sure that uh, Odell does address them because it's not only you, it's actually many other users mm -hmm. who are um, having the same issues and it's the same <laughs> recurring theme. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Steve, you first. I was gonna say, I have, I've already pinged three people. We're gonna schedule a meeting. We will talk about this. So I appreciate already. you raising yeah. it. It's um, gonna happen. You, Steve, you, also, you don't know how many issues I've posted. <laughs> you also um, touched on sort of an operational, pragmatic, real world kind of issue that, that was my experience as well running in particular multi-tenanted clusters, um, you know, where, where you're using namespace to get sort of pseudo isolation. Um, you know, ultimately, you know, the purpose-built clusters worked better for us, but in that, even in that scenario, we, we found the need, you know, to have many Prometheus's, Promethei, you know, one for the cluster itself, and then, and then you know, teams or whatever, whatever, um, self-service, you know, or, or team ownership scheme is, is, is at play, you know, that was the granularity that we needed to give everybody their own Prometheus um, because yeah. cardinality bombs would take out not only yeah, yeah, Prometheus, exactly. but like, you know, the clusters <laughs> metrics itself, right? So I like that um, term. No. <laughs> yeah, well, there, there's actually something we used. I don't know if it's still called this, but it was called the cardinality bomb detector. Uh, and, it, and it literally looks at the number of series and some other things as a rate and then sets up alert manager configs, you know, if something is blowing up. But, but again, in practice, if you don't have those blast radii, um, you know, then you know it blew up. Um, that's great. And, and, and that's <laughs> but, but like, like you still like have like your blind, your metric, all the alerts go nuts, right? Because all metrics yeah. kind of just stop as Prometheus grinds to a halt. So, and, and, and J Paris doesn't help, right? So, um, yeah. that's something we're kind of is one part of our list that we're building into this new, I don't know, scraper, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, is yeah, we like we can measure how many points we get for a single metric and we know how many to expect. So if we get too many, we're like, okay, hey, this is the thousands, uh, a thousand, like, I don't know. We, we, we had like bucks where there was like one metric scrape was like 250,000 lines. And it usually is like 10. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're like, we can tell like, okay, let's start dropping metrics instead because that's, we alert the exporter and like say, hey, you're sending too many metrics and there's a bug and we start drop and fail gracefully, um, which right now with the current architecture of open telemetry, I think would, would be very hard to get into. And like our team developed kind of the stance of open telemetry is great, but it's way too general for the optimizations we want to have. I think, so, I think uh, um, to that point, um, and sorry, Steve, I just um, wanted to complete this thought was, uh, Kevin, that there was a discussion and there is actually an open discussion on having a lighter weight, um, you know, optimized collector. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think that, uh, again, I'd invite you to, you know, kind of chat with us about it mm -hmm. because, um, uh, again, we totally understand that, you know, not all use cases fit one, uh, uh, you know, snapshot. And, and uh, there are obviously, that's the reason why distributions also exist downstream, because, you know, you can actually shed 
the number of processors or tune the you know uh, components uh, which are part of an general release if you will of the collector and and that's one of the ways it's been handled but that said again i really would love to see and you know high cardinality optimized um uh, version of the collector with a yeah. with a smaller footprint uh, I mean, and there's really two scenarios there right there's the high cardinality all by itself which can be challenging but you know is a straightforward optimization problem and or resourcing problem but but the the sudden cardinality bombs or spikes you know I found myself wishing, and maybe this is already in Otella, I don't know. We were at, at the time we were running, you know, Prometheus directly and using remote, right? Uh, Hotel Collector wasn't quite as grown up. This was like three years ago. Um, uh, but I, I found myself almost wishing for like a circuit breaker pattern inside the scrapers, right? So that for a particular target, and there's different ways you can implement it, you know, you could do based on delta or absolutes or, you know, all, all manner of rules. But, you know, if you could have a per target, you know, this is just too many. I'm, I'm going to just stop and, and lose metrics for this one target rather than try to drink from the fire hose and tank everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and by the way, too, you know, if you don't have a, a wall, a right ahead log in Prometheus that's like dramatically larger than defaults, right? You have a very, very short amount of time. No, David um, Ashpole actually wrote the wall for the. Yeah, character. I mean, it was awesome. So, I mean, it let us mitigate yeah. this, you know. Yes, yes. But I mean, time. again, it's not perfect, right? It's not I mean, ideal, right? Right. Um, you know, and, and, that, and if we did have that with some same defaults, you know, as well, or, or at least the potential for them, then the complexity of like what we had to do, which is like every namespace gets its own Prometheus, you know, the cluster gets its own Prometheus, but then people might want to do rules that branch across Promethei. So now you need like a multi-tenant cross tenant, you know, query capability and or scraping capability if you wanted to do recording rules that record rates, for example, of like, you know, something in your app combined with something from the cluster, right? So it very quickly gets complicated and in a, in a sea of painful RBAC. So I think like an elegant fix a little bit upstream on the collector side might really yeah. have a lot of knock-on benefit. But Kevin, definitely, I think there's value in following up. Steve, please go yeah. ahead. I know you yeah. want to. Yeah, yeah I, th I think there's several things, right? Like there's definitely some missing features. I totally agree with the circuit breaking, by the way, like we should totally implement something like that to offer kind of flexibility. But you're, you're spot on, Kevin, like, Today, the Otel collector is kind of a generic, like just trying to support a bunch of use cases. It, we are definitely going to head down the path of needing to optimize. Like we're going to have like an edge instance or like a, a, a high cardinality instance or what have you, because these use cases, sure. I mean, Google has massive scale, totally appreciate that. But some other uh, users of this system are also going to have some similar type behaviors that need to be handled. Right. And just having a generic solution, the collector is not going to be great. I, I, I want to just second what Alalita was saying, which is we would love to chat understand those use cases better, figure out how we can better support you. And even if it's not today, even if it's like in the future, uh, how do we get there? Because some of this I think is applicable to, to many users out there. Yep. Yeah. And like one more thing I think I can share is um, we like we've spent, I, I think I, I like I joined Google October and since I joined, I've been mainly working on the collector and optimizing memory stuff. Uh, and one thing we noticed is that we're getting to a point where um, we optimized a lot and now we're mostly fighting the garbage collector, mm -hmm. um, which, and, and so it, I'm investigating. Fighting uh, what? My, my audio crackled. I'm so sorry. The, the garbage collector. The go oh, garbage collector. Uh, we're like looking to four metrics, like collecting, parsing, sending, if we would be better off using a non-garbage collected language to do that because like the metrics collecting part, it, it like it's a bunch of strings and numbers and then we throw them away and collect them again. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of an experiment I'm, I'm into right now. Um, because we like at, at a certain scale, you notice that after a scrape, even if you do 60 seconds, it takes longer for the garbage collector to clean up behind the metrics it just collected. Yep. And then the next grape comes along and you go even higher and yep. it kind of keeps going and it's not always great. I mean, the garbage yep. collector was tweakable. At least there were customizations for it. I don't know if we yep. kept that functionality. So maybe you can play with it a little bit, but if not, then yeah, probably a different garbage technique would be beneficial yeah. here. That's kind of an experiment. 
Um, I, I don't know if that was ever discussed with hotel to do the collector and like something else. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, actually, Kevin, I mean, these are all known issues. It's more that I think there are a couple of things here. One is, um, again, it's on the list for the hotel collector, you know, to address all of these areas. But um, it's also, you know, we've worked with Dave Ashbolk here, you know, pretty mm -hmm. closely, as well as um, some of the other engineers who are involved. But I think there's also your input there as well as other feedback would be useful because I, I mean, this is something that even uh, we are seeing. Um, and, and, you know, so it's something that I, I definitely would love to see more prioritization on. Yeah. And, and please um, come with your design suggestions, you know, please come yeah, with your yeah, changes. Don't, don't uh, hesitate because we'd like to ensure that these changes are made upstream on the project yeah. itself. So uh, again, don't be shy. Yeah, no, no, like, yeah, right now, I'm we're doing a lot of experimentation and, and learning, and I'm I definitely want to bring most of it upstream somewhere yeah, because yeah yeah and then typically the project is very you know very accommodating and really supports you know in fact one of the, <laughs> the strengths and weaknesses of hotel is that it's it's incorporates everything as you said it's like then it becomes a big fat general yeah. collector right <laughs> so, I have a question. Absolutely. Very Kevin too, but oh, yeah. I'll wait till I didn't want to cut you off. No, yeah, and, and one thing about that, very quick. Um, we found something surprising in the profile a while ago. Um, but I think it's Prometheus in the hotel. The Prometheus library imports for its discovery stuff a lot of third parties, like uh, yeah. and in, in, in this case, I think it was uh, an AWS library that always allocated uh I think one or two megabytes of memory. Um, just by being imported as Go code, which like we now do like vendor magic to get rid of dependencies we don't need because the Prometheus library allocates memory for something you don't use. And we're like, what? Why? <laughs> so, oh, it, it was a secular dependency. <laughs> yeah. be. um, because uh, there's a lot of dependencies on the Prometheus side that automatically, yeah. you know, you-, you The discovery, of, service yes, discovery. Yeah. And then that's Go partially, but it's also, you know, uh, I yeah. think that could be trimmed for sure. <laughs> Um, you mentioned that you had forked a few of the, the, the pieces of hotel. Um, I was curious what your experience was, you know, in running with those forks. Like, for example, was it easy for you to replicate CI? Was that straightforward? Um, and, you know, or, or you know, and, and also, like, what's your predicate for pushing these changes back up so that you're not having to work off a of fork? So, you know, I'm kind of curious, like, for someone new who wants to make a change, like, what you've done, you know, forking stuff so you can make improvements, that that should be frictionless, and I haven't done it myself yet. Um, I'm kind of just curious, like, as feedback to the hotel folks, um, yeah. what was the experience like? Like, was it pain and suffering or straightforward? Um, well, the forks are not on GitHub. They are an internal system because for the like build security we need to have the code around um but i mean the forking was slow and push um we don't like the ci part we didn't replicate for i don't know if the hotel collector fork has we, we don't maintain that if that has a uh, ci um but the forks are really there um mostly especially the prometheus and the hotel ones to um give us a way to quickly test the develop fixes and build images internally until we know that it works and then contribute to backups um because importing the yeah. github versions into our builds is is, is pain uh, I guess what I meant was like when you're in that workflow, when you're fixing those bugs as as you need, as you need to with a four oh, yeah. or like, you know, was it a bunch of work to be able to have the same CI that would run upstream run locally on your mirror or fork, or was that sort of something you had to engineer around and or bring your own CI to, right? Um, the collector we have in a separate repo, and we built like we built the collector ourselves. We have our own CI and testing and stuff and. Yeah, so we don't use the hotel collector binary. We have built our own binary because we add stuff to it. Um, and for the other parts, like my process right now is I have all the forks I need checked out locally. And when I test something, I overwrite the Go mod file to point to local paths instead of a version. 
and that works. Uh, it's not it's not great, but it works. Yeah. Um, so, so, so maybe there's like a maybe there's a you know nice to have kind of issue that we could log an hotel just around you know new contributor experience and or reducing friction to you know so like if I wanted to make a fork to make a patch or something you know like it should just work out of the box. I I, 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 um, yeah. I, I want it all work. <laughs> But, you yeah, know, um, I think what was more challenging was whenever we updated the hotel libraries, um, there is a lot of connected libraries, like there's the collector and then there is the contrib and Prometheus. And like the one where a few times we had it, where we updated open telemetry collector to, I think the one was from 0.35 to 0.37 or something. Mm -hmm. And a lot of stuff went weird and we didn't like understand why. And then you have to, go through a lot of diffs and and understand like across three, four repositories what changed in these versions to find out why it went bad. The release um, notes were not good enough? Um, in that case, no, because it was a very subtle change and we, mm. but it, like it also because we relied on probably implementation details, we relied on labels and they were no longer there at some point or renamed in some way and we didn't notice and sure, sure. We, I mean, we fixed, is a like one of the custom things for you. yeah yeah one of the custom things in our collector is we define in our config what metrics we accept and um based on and what labels we accept and if we see a metric with a label we don't know we just drop it so there was a label added to every metric and as it's not on our allow list we just dropped them all and we like but it's hard to debug and we didn't know and like david helped us a little and we found that it was that but it took a while yeah it's a big dependency tree let's put it that way but i mean again you know if you had run into issues like this in the future just ask because i can you know again yeah. there is a collector uh, maintainers channel and you can just ask mm -hmm. like yeah. right now we ask uh, David, I don't know if we should also ask somewhere else. It's yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, typically, <laughs> um, I, I mean, if you're on CNCF Slack, I can ping you the names, but you can reach out to, mm. uh, uh, you can reach out to Alex Burton, you can reach out to Bogdan, you can reach out to um, mm. uh, Jurassic. Uh, there, there are a few maintainers that you can reach out to. So in case you ever, you know, have an issue where you are seeing dependency changes or any kind of breaking changes, please, mm -hmm. please just ping us, ping me. I'll, I'll yeah. find the right engineer. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, I think you had mentioned <clears throat> that you, you and or your team were looking for ways to contribute to the technical advisory group, you know, this, this body itself. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any idea about this, the kind of things you'd like to do? I mean, I think, I, I think it is the case that we have a, pile of work streams defined but not resourced um and you know the, the way that tags work like if there's something that you or your team want to work on that's in scope uh for for the for the tag and it's there isn't an issue for it or something like that then we'll just make one right we, it's a it's a community driven group yeah uh, and then especially i think that uh kevin as you called out you know there are specific use cases even for the hotel collector that actually can be defined uh in in the in this forum for example and and you know then worked collaboratively with with hotel with the hotel mm -hmm. you know maintainers right so again mm -hmm. leverage it because that reiterates you know the necessity and need yeah. for supporting different use cases specifically. Per particularly if they're pragmatic you know anyone would hit this at scale or even not at scale kind of kind of kind of things i mean I've noticed over the last year, you know, there's a dramatic disparity between like, you know, the 900 plus people in our Slack channel and the, you know, generally less than a dozen uh, that, that that come every couple of weeks, right? So I, I feel like there's a huge untapped reservoir of people who are lurking, right? And so if we engage in work that meets people where they are, we might find ourselves, you know, um, with more resourcing and more contribution from, from the community, as well as more feedback to vet some of these, you know, ideas, you know, in this case for OTEL, but just generally for observability. 
So right, yeah. right, and and I mean, going back to Kevin, your point of you know when you're really looking at high volume uh, streams of metrics, um, you know what what architecture actually works because even Prometheus has you know issues, and uh, at and um, again that needs to be addressed for a you know better user experience that needs to be addressed in all of these stacks no matter what right so those discussions you know need actually to be had across projects and you know really um, addressed to scale to you know what is needed today right because again uh, these stacks have evolved over time prometheus included yeah and like i think that's mainly my my well mainly my focus we only four people, so we split things yeah. a little. Um, yeah. Uh, is yeah, performance and efficiency. Performance yeah. efficiency, scalability. So, I, I we noticed this well ongoing push for Prometheus as a standard, which I'm mostly on board with. I'm excited for open metrics and would like to work on that because I think it's an opportunity. Is one thing is Prometheus, like I've been using it for I don't know how long, and it never seemed scalable like that's why we see like products like Mimir or Thanos or whatever um and I like I want to see how this tag is an opportunity to I don't know advocate for scalability and, and approaches yeah. to be having yeah. metrics more scalable um and efficient because did you um so what do you mean by scalable I I, I hear you I'm not disputing anything but but do you mean scalable like, in terms of like durable storage and or retention and ability to query or total number of things that can be scraped or memory overhead or um, like what in what dimension of scalability are you referring to multi-dimensional but like for my my biggest issue right now is for example previous format is uh, the text-based format with like you have a lot of string like the metrics names along it's it's a lot of overhead head that might be worth optimizing away um if Possible, like that's why I'm curious about the up and downs of the proto format. I know it was dropped and now it's coming back. Um, and yeah, like optimizing the processes that collect and scrape, send, store metrics. Yeah. Um, because that's what, where, where my pain is right now. That's kind of the, over the last few months where I built my, my opinion and now I, I'm looking on how to <laughs> use it somewhere. Um, no, I, I, I completely yeah. agree, uh, Kevin, with all the, I mean, again, I've seen the same issues for the last couple of years. So we've been working on it steadily, but it's just mm -hmm. that uh, I think that feedback as well as, um, you know, how we actually look at it at an overall scale uh, where some of these issues are standardized because performance benchmarks, for example, and um, uh, it can be standardized, right? I mean, that's um, and depending on you know what the definition of different categories of scalability is, right? And and um, those are you know those are some of the areas that um, both Prometheus as a project as well as Hotel as a project have been interested in, uh, and. It, and we always want really, more and higher resolution metrics. So, yes, exactly. Like, and I'm high trying... tonality is very important. I agree. Yeah, this, this, and, this is, oh, sorry. No, I, and like just for me personally, I, I see like with the also the ecosystem narrowing down in Prometheus, I just want to make sure we still keep thinking about, I don't know, the like what comes after. Like yeah. Prometheus is awesome. Uh, I really like it, but I don't want to stay stubborn on okay that it's prometheus and we stop thinking about the next yep. innovation for metrics or no no and and uh, the, that's kind of where I'm at. absolutely because i think that you know as the as the uh, platforms that we are pulling data from uh, for telemetry for observability change and they evolve right uh, the formats need to be compatible the scalability you know uh requirements and stability guarantees need to accommodate that right so it's something that's always in work in progress and, uh, and... 
also the protocols, like the, the, some of the things you said are analogous to some of the things that have been coming out of the hotel profiling discussions, uh, particularly around, and here again, Google has a stateful protocol versus a stateless protocol. So you lower the overhead of like these repeated strings over and over and over. So, you know, um, as we do look at this ecosystem, I, I couldn't agree more that, you know, uh, we, we want to be looking forward, not, you know, saying, well, we've got this one thing and it's good forever because then you get surprised. But um, I think inclusive to that discussion is also, you know, the protocols and their overhead and, and the nature of them and how to do that in a way that, that doesn't have a one size fits all kind of um, yeah. Yeah. approach. Um, yeah, in a minute or two here, we do need to transition to a couple of bookkeeping items, but I can do them really quick. I just need to make some announcements before we hit the 50 minute mark. Uh, so we've got another 10 minutes. Um, there are a, a couple of people who joined while we were talking. Um, do you guys want to say hi, or was there anything specific you wanted to uh, put on the agenda, either for, for this meeting or, the, or, or a future one? Gaurav, Christian. No, it doesn't doing? have to be that. <laughs> we're just calling and saying hi. <laughs> Yes, yeah, I don't want to call you out, you know, <laughs> but do you want to say hi and acknowledge you're here. Yeah, I was fairly regular in the previous meetings in mm -hmm. a few months back, but, but uh, lately I had no time to join this course. So this week I had some time and I checked what's going on and it was a really interesting discussion. I'm glad I joined. Good. Cool. Um, all right, well, uh, I'll just, do, do we want to, is it okay to transition here? I don't want to be too abrupt because this is actually really- Yeah, I think Kevin, uh, again, man, just to wrap up, I was, uh, Kevin, thanks again for, for you know, kind of discussing uh, these different areas as an action item. Steve and I'll follow up from, you know, hotels we have uh, to make sure that we, you know, have not missed any of these um, requirements as well as, you know, work towards, figuring out how we can accelerate some of these changes that you know are already on our radar but should be made you know sooner than later and also would love to you know have a little uh, more time from you if possible on the hotel side you know to actually review design proposals as well as uh, provide feedback on you know some of the code that's been developed already um, the collector sig maybe a bit noisy but i do welcome you to you know kind of join in there it's on wednesdays at nine uh pacific time and um but you know happy to also help pull in the collector leads to be able to you know discuss with you we work very closely with david ashpole uh, but you know he also has a lot of different projects he's working on and and uh, with Josh Surat uh, also, but you know Josh is also kind of spread thin, right? So please get more involved yourself, and and you know uh, ping me on Slack. Let's you know work with Steve to figure this out. Yeah, and just just not like, is there people specifically from the stack working on open metrics or the implementation? Of yes, it? yes. Like, There's the Prometheus okay. work group, right? That we have, and we work with okay. open metrics very closely there. Most of the, uh, um, you know, active uh, maintainers on open metrics join in there. Uh, it's on Wednesdays at 8 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, there's a work group meeting every week. So, you know, if, if that's the time that works for you, please, you know, please do join um, okay. tomorrow or next week, whatever works for you. Yeah, I need to, I'm used on time, so I, I need to check. Is it in the yeah. CNCF calendar or? Uh, it's on the hotel calendar. Okay. I need to find Open it. telemetry, okay. yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, <clears throat> cool, uh, I wanted to make just a few brief uh, sort of announcements because again, um, by looking at the YouTube video, uh, uh, download uh, viewing numbers. You know who's actually watching these. Um, uh, it's, it's quite a bit larger than than folks that can be here present presently. So uh, one piece of that is our meeting times are, are almost are always you know the first and third Tuesdays uh, at noon uh, Eastern, which is great for the various folks in Americas. But uh, we we probably should move to a cadence where you know every other meeting is a little bit more suitable uh, for Asia Pacific and and Europe. Uh, so, uh, so that's just one thing, you know, I think maybe next in two weeks, we can kind of 
make something more formal around that, but is wanted to put that out there. Um, as far as nominations go, we've, we've kind of been running lean, if you will, uh, in terms of roles. So um, I intend to nominate uh, Steve Flanders as a co-chair. Um, co-chairs have a two-year um, duration. And uh, as some folks might not know Steve, and he's here today, I wanted to give him an opportunity to introduce himself and just um, uh, say who you are, maybe, for those that are uh, not familiar. Uh, and, and I'll say I met Steve close to a decade ago virtually. I don't know if he remembers, but when he was working on Log Insight, um, uh, we, we were both in, 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 in a similar uh, in a similar part of a VMware. But, um, Steve, Steve's awesome. <laughs> so hey, it's good to have him. <laughs> Yeah, so so I'm Steve. Uh, I, I've kind of been in the monitoring observability space for for more than a decade now. Uh, I've worked in the logging space at VMware. I did uh, APM uh, or distributed tracing at a stealth startup called Omniscient that was acquired by Splunk three years ago. Uh, now I'm at Splunk and I'm also working on the uh, metric side of the house, so Splunk infrastructure monitoring, which was previously Signal Effects. Uh, at Omniscient, I was working on the Open Census uh, project and the Open Census service, which is now the Open Telemetry Collector. Uh, and I've been involved in basically Open Census and Open Telemetry, both projects since uh, very early days, since the very beginning. Uh, so very, very passionate about what's happening in this space. Uh, I think it's really innovative and, and necessary. I have lots of uh, customer conversations across many different companies that I've been at uh, and kind of feeling the pain of how hard is it to actually do uh, observability in general, but how to do it in a way that's kind of like vendor agnostic because you don't really want to rip and replace. That's a very heavy lift. People are just looking for a generic solution and then kind of flexibility through configuration so they can leverage whatever backends they want to, whether it's open source, proprietary, local SaaS, whatever, right? Um, so uh, really think that the Open Telemetry project has a lot to offer. Still has a long way to go, uh, still quite early days, but uh, really proud of the work that everyone's been uh, kind of pitching in. And given that we see broad adoption across cloud providers, end users, uh, observability companies and the like, like I think it really points out a, a pain point. So area that I'm very passionate about, uh, used to be a pretty extensive blogger, uh, haven't been doing that as of late because life has been busy, but hoping to get back to it here soon, that would be great. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely passionate about uh, observability in general. I love the CNCF and uh, would love to be uh, helping out in this, if this tags. So uh, thanks for your consideration. Awesome. Uh, that's that's great, uh, Steve. Thank you again. And and I think uh, you know as going forward, um, uh, I think you know if our meetings as you know Steve and I know you've joined in the past as uh, twice uh, every every first and third Tuesdays of uh, you know at nine a.m. But I think uh, as Matt was suggesting, we might also we should at least address one meeting in APAC times uh, once every month, if not, you know, so alternatingly, if you will. And, and I think 4 p.m. Pacific might be a good time, uh, although it's 7 p.m. on the East Coast, um, but still, still doable, right? Because again, it seems to work out. I'm on the East Coast, uh, I believe, as is Steve, and, and uh, you know, we've enjoyed, I think, two and a half years of noon meetings, so, um, you know, I think... Where, where is it? 9 a.m. on Pacific? It's like the hardest time to meet. <laughs> um, the, uh, and, and the second one, he's not here today, he had a conflict, but Henrik Rex, uh, he runs a couple of podcasts. One is called It's Observable, that's been running for some time now, um, uh, and he covers a lot of issues uh, around observability and open telemetry. And also there's uh, something that he and Michael Hasenblas um, have been doing a little bit uh, called, uh, I believe, open source news. Um, uh, he's, he's been vocal and helpful uh, and is, is, a, is a great example of, of someone from the community that's just persistently been here uh, and, and is helping out uh, in a variety of forms. So um, he should be here, uh, I think in two weeks. So. Um, that was the other one. Um, and then lastly, I put in a couple of links. Uh, we talked about it before, um, about other sort of roles that would, would make a lot of sense, I think. Uh, so if anyone knows anyone looking 
for an excuse to contribute, <laughs> um, we either have one or can make one. So um, that's really all I had for today. And it's 1249, I think for the first time in about a year, uh, at least the, the agenda items have been covered by the 50 minute mark. So I'm gonna take that as a win. But if there's anything else folks wanna chat about, um, I think the CNCF Zoom doesn't cut off for another 12 minutes or so. <laughs> No, I think I think this is a good discussion. And Kevin, thank you again for you know kind of bringing in some of these areas. Uh, we definitely love love to see you know hotel uh, and open, open metrics uh, and Prometheus continue to work closely in this in in terms of metrics support you know and and handling the different use cases. Um, so let's let's continue to work together. And yeah, and um, uh, we, I'll also reach out to the Prometheus and Open Metrics communities. Typically, Richard joins in uh, from Open Metrics, but uh, would love to see other folks also joining in from the larger for the larger discussions. Yeah, looking forward to. It. So uh, I pinged you on Slack, uh, Kevin. So let me yep. know if you saw it. Thanks. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Thanks for setting this up. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Thanks, Richard. Chat later, folks. Take care. Yep.